Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's May 29th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm joined by Dan Bingham and Chris Flossie from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Thanks, gentlemen, for being here this week. Uh, Dan, let's talk to you first. Uh, the uh, strong activity from investors again this week and strong uh, performance from municipal yields. What uh, kind of feedback did you hear from the market? Municipal yields continue to trend lower. We had uh, approximately uh, 17 of the last 19 days with price improvements on the high-grade municipal scale with one-year MMD coming in at 11 basis points, 10-year MMD coming in at 84 base, basis points, and 30-year at 165. Um, while those numbers aren't uh, the absolute lows that we saw back earlier in the year, um, it's sure, certainly seen in continue, continuation of the stability and the improvements we've seen recently. Um, we talked a little bit um, about the uh, challenges the high yield part of the market has been facing as well. Um, and we've even seen some pretty good price improvements on the on the high yield side with recent MTA and Illinois deals trading up as much as 10% um, in the secondary market. Um, in the benchmark tobacco bond deal, the uh, Buckeye fives of 55 are currently trading at a premium. They got at the, at the throes of the uh, challenges back in March, they got as uh, low as a $69 price. So um, continue uh, challenges in some parts of the high yield market, but we, we are seeing uh, signs of stability there as well. And we're definitely seeing more uh, investors uh, differentiating between credits, right? So, you know, even even investment grade credits, not necessarily uh, would have been in the high yield bucket in the past. Investors are paying very close attention to the underpinnings, uh, trying to look into the future and figure out how they're going to be treated by uh, by COVID. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people are going through a much deeper dive on a credit uh, point of view. Illinois um, highlight uh, that they uh, pass a budget this week, which includes $5 billion borrowing from the uh, Fed's. MLF facility, which I believe will be the first um, transaction for that facility. We never expected a lot of uh, usage given the absolute levels that they're charging for that. Um, but Illinois, as I say, uh, did pass that budget with the anticipation of $5 billion of borrowing there. It's always nice to have the safety valve there as well. Um, on, the, on the demand side, we, Lipper reported this week uh, another 870 or so billion dollars of inflows. Um, you know, certainly not a, a large number compared to what we saw again over the prior the year prior to COVID, but uh, but solid performance kind of gives the, the market some stability, right? Yeah. So last week was a billion eight. This week was 800 and change million flows. Um, those numbers are still pretty good inflows into the municipal fund complex. You know, we've we've all been a, a little immune by it all, given some of the wild uh, swings and flows we've seen over the past couple of months. Um, but continuation of, of pretty good um, uh, retail or, or end buyer use of the municipal product. So, Chris, let's transition over to the primary market side. Uh, this was a holiday shortened week, but BAM still saw pretty substantial activity. What kind of transactions did you see? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, it was still a good week for BAM, where in aggregate we were able to price $230 million of BAM insured paper. Uh, there are two transactions that we wanted to highlight this week. One was a Stiefel transaction for Sharonville, uh, Ohio, which is a special obligation transaction. And also Mesero was able to price two series of a Prairie State Community College District in Illinois. Um, and as we move on to next week, the first week of June, uh, we expect another active week. Uh, Cruise and Associates is expected to price roughly $150 million of Hot Springs, Arkansas. And that's a transaction that's going to carry the BAM Green Star. All right, and uh, BAM's Alexis Plattis uh, was the underwriter in that transaction, and cheaper, uh, she produced a BAM Credit Insights video with all the credit details on that, as well as a deeper discussion on how it qualified for the BAM Green Star status. You can click the link above, and that'll uh, take you right to the video for a little uh, deeper dive on that transaction. Uh, Chris, also uh, in the secondary market, I know uh, one area that's been active is California pension obligation bonds. The, the numbers on those transactions have been attractive for, uh, for a growing number of issuers. Um, what kind of activity are you seeing there? Uh, we've got a lot of volume in there as a taxable transaction, so we've had some follow-up follow through on a Riverside County transaction as well as the city of Ontario, California. So this week, there's another transaction coming. It's another high-grade AA-rated transaction, uh, but we'll be following that one, and that one's pricing with uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Very good. So we'll see uh, how that follows through. We can uh, talk about it next week. Thanks for joining us. Uh, have a great weekend. Market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. 
the face of volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption, like the one we're experiencing right now. BAM. Build America Mutual. Ask your broker about BAM insured municipal bonds.